here we go. So I hope you do remember where we were. We were looking at the second derivative and I was telling you that if you think about functions as vectors, then the second derivative is basically a matrix operating on that vector, okay? Just like when you operate, when you multiply a matrix with a vector, you get a vector. Here you also uh, do this operation, <coughs> second derivative operation, and you get a function. You operate on a function, you get a function on the other side. So we were looking at this, right? So basically this was the d squared over, okay, I already wrote it here. So uh, let me just switch to this. So I've already written it here. So the second derivative evaluated at point two, right, is f3 plus f1 minus 2 f2 divided by delta x squared, okay? So let me make it more clear. If g of x is equal to d squared f over dx squared, then this is nothing but g of x2, right? g of x2 is f x3 plus f x1 minus 2 f x2 divided by delta x squared. g is the second derivative of function f. So g is a vector and f is a vector. Okay? Now, imagine a matrix here and you multiply that matrix with the vector f here and you get g. So you have g of x1 here, g of x2 here, f of x1 here, f of x2 here, etc. Continues like that, right? Now this equation, g of x2, is basically this one. So how do I get that one? Uh, I have something in the first uh, row. On the second row, what do I need to have to get this? Let me, let me rewrite it one more time. This basically tells you that it's, uh, okay. You have to be careful and correct my mistakes. So this basically tells us that it's 1 over delta x squared times fx3 plus 1 over delta x squared fx2 minus 2 over delta x squared, okay, this one is 1, fx2. If you want to put it in a matrix, look at the coefficients. So. 1 over delta x squared is over here. Do you see it? Then you have negative 2 del uh, over delta x squared. Then the third coefficient is this one, 1 over delta x squared, right? And the rest are zeros. So if you take this row, if you take this row, multiply it with this function, <coughs> with this column, you get this value. Do you agree with that? Do you see it or not? Yes? What does it mean? Basically, if I take, if I take these delta x squares out, so let me put it over here, this is going to be a matrix that goes on like this. So you have negative 2 in the diagonals, 1 in the off diagonals, and the rest is 0. Why? Hmm? Why? What? Well, very good question. So we didn't talk about the first row, right? The first row in our case could be 
So what, what can fit to the first row? Negative 2 over here, 1 over here. So in principle, the rest is 0. And this is going to be our matrix. And this matrix corresponds to a certain boundary condition. It corresponds to a boundary condition where the edges are 0. OK? Uh, you put the edges at 0. But if you have something on the edges, e to the ika, something like that, we will come to that. Then it's a periodic boundary condition kinds of stuff. Okay? But this is a detail. I'm just trying to show you that uh, functions correspond to vectors, matrices correspond to operators. Did you get that message? Yes. Incidentally, this is turns out favorite matrix of Gilbert Strang, as he descri uh, described in his recent interview. Uh, OK. If you don't know who he is, I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> Partial differential equations. We will come back to this, OK? Matrices are operators equations. So let's first of all write a function that depends on several coefficients. This is just an example, OK? OK, what is del f over del t? You see, I didn't write df over dt. Because at the end of the day, you are going to get a function. So that's why we need to make sure that it's del f over del t. What do I get from this? Do you remember? Those who know can shout it out. x squared plus 6t. So you basically treat the x part as co uh, constant, as a coefficient. <coughs> while taking a partial derivative. How about this one? Hmm? 2xt. 2xt. So now you treat t as a constant, minus 4. OK? Any problem here? No problem. Now let's look at diffusion equation. And uh, let's see what we can learn from this. <coughs> Diffusion equation. A typical diffusion equation looks like this. <coughs> let's say this is diffusion of temperature. This is the diffusion constant. And temperature depends on temperature depends on x and t. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a bar like this, and the edges are kept at zero temperature. Okay. And the rest has this wiggly temperature distribution. Okay? What will happen to this temperature di distribution as the time runs by? Okay? That's the question. What we want to understand, what we want to understand here is how diffusion equation works. To understand it, let's start from a simpler equation, simpler system. So for a simple system, I will just start with this. Just a simpler system from 0 to A. And the temperature is just, just so happens that the temperature at t equals to 0 is simply sine of pi over A x. OK, let's, let's say it started like that. We will come back to the wiggly one, OK? But this one, what do you think will happen 
next. Well, for this one, we can actually take the second derivative. What do I get when I take the second derivative? I get minus pi squared over a squared sine pi over a x. Do you agree with this? Any objection? No? Good. So this is what this side is. So that side is this function. As you can see, it has the same sign here. Just like sine pi x over a, here I also have sine pi x over a. Now what it tells us that right at the beginning, the change in the temperature is minus d times pi squared over a squared sine <coughs> pi over a x. So what does it mean? It means that a little bit of change in the temperature will be this coefficient times sine pi <coughs> over a x delta t. Do you agree with this? Did you follow this? Yes? Do you remember where we started? We started t x 0 was sine pi over a x. And now t x at delta t, just a little bit of time later, is the same thing. Let me just write it down like this. It's t x 0 plus delta t. Do you agree? This is the little bit of change, right? And what is it? It is basically sine pi over a x minus d times pi squared over a squared delta t times sine pi over a x. Hujam, are you following? Yes. So this is basically 1 minus d pi squared over a squared delta t sine pi over a x. So the profile didn't change. The profile is still a sine. It just went down a little bit, right? It's still the same sign. Let's, let me just copy this one. Uh, copy it. Paste it here. What happened is that the temperature was like this, and now it's like this. OK? Let me change the style to green. Do you have any questions at this point? No? And as you can see, it will continue like that because now what you have is just this coefficient, right? And that coefficient will be diminished further and further and further, right? As time passes by, this will be, the profile will be the same. The profile will remain the same. So, we can just say that t x of t is going to be some function, sine, uh, not some function, special function, this one, times some function of time. And this function of time basically is diminishing. So g of t is going down. Right? It's just going down and it's going to go to zero. Celsius everywhere. All right? Okay, let's do the following. Let's find del t over del t, x of t. What do you get? You get the same function.
you just uh, take the derivative of the g part. And let's also evaluate d times del squared t over del x squared. And that will give you minus pi squared over a squared d sine g of t. So if you remember our first equation, this one needs to be equal to that one, right? So what does it imply? Sine pi, pi, x, pi a over a times x cancels out. And you basically get the following equation. G, dg over dt is negative pi squared over a squared d times g of t. Some of you are thinking, why are you bothering with this? Just tell us that you are doing separation of variables, right? But hopefully, I'm trying to give the message that sine is a special function here, and it doesn't change the profile in this diffusion equation because it's the second derivative. Sine fix, fits perfectly to this second derivative kind of stuff. It brings out only a coefficient, etc. That's the hidden message here. Yes? Why? Yes, very good question. Thank you very much. Because that's the diffusion equation. OK? Very good. No worries. <coughs> it will come back. So g of t is e to the minus pi squared d over a squared times t. That's what comes out. And you basically have, oh, OK. Do I need to elaborate how I go from this to this? No. OK. So t of xt, I'm aware. Don't worry. I will write, and it come back. It will come back. There you go. OK, this is the result. Yes. You can do separation of variables, right? Mm -hmm. And no problem. Everything is solved. I'm just showing you this step by step, OK? Yeah. No. No, because if you if it's just a random function, if it's just any function, then it does it will not necessarily bring out the function times a coefficient. It will not. It only works if it's sine n n pi x over a kind of stuff. Do you see what I mean? Yes? So we couldn't find the general solution on the top No, no, no. We couldn't. We could do this only because we started with a sign. Let's start again. Let's start again with t of x 0, which is now sine 2 pi x over a. What does it mean? It means that we have started with not just one hump, but two humps like this. So we started like that. Remember, we started like this, and it just fold down. Now we started like this, right? If you do all this, the same operations, let me just tell you that for this particular one, for this one, d squared t over dx squared is negative 4 pi squared over a squared times d. Like if, if, okay, 
Let me just write it like this. So its second derivative has a larger coefficient in front of it. Before it was pi squared over a squared. Now it is 4 pi squared over a squared. I'm very sorry. This happens when you are on do not disturb. Didn't expect that. All right. OK, what does it mean? If you continue this, so remember this, OK? Remember, this one we get if you start with sine pi over a x, and you end up with this. If you start with sine 2 pi over a x, you get something similar. Let me even copy this. OK, let me just duplicate this, put it here. Same stuff, just decaying faster. It's 4 here and 2 here. Do you see that the decay is faster if you have more wiggles? That's what the diffusion equation is telling you. Diffusion equation tells you that this equation tells you that with time you get rid of wiggles. That's what it's telling you. Because if there are wiggles, okay, then the second derivative is higher, right? If second derivative is higher, uh, actually higher in magnitude, but it's negative. So second derivative is negative. So you get basically faster decay, OK? We could have understood this just simply by looking at any function at any local position let's say you have you have such a function of temperature profile let me just concentrate on this part okay what do i have i have a function like this when when a function is like this what is the second derivative is it negative or positive negative okay since it's negative it tells you that uh, del t over del t this is going to be negative okay what does it mean it means that this part will go down right how about over here let's say you concentrate over here what do you have you have something like this what is the second derivative? Positive. positive. So then del t over del t is positive. Then this will go up. So yet another way of showing you that you get rid of wiggles. The wigglier you are, the faster you get rid of it. OK? All right. Very good. Now let me make my point. Sure. Uh, we can, yes. Like, you have problems with boundary conditions. Is that right? Yes. So, yeah. Uh, the boundary conditions are uh, set at zero, and we have uh, temperatures between 
No, we also have to have, bond we not only need to have boundary conditions in time, which is the initial temperature distribution, we also need boundary condition in space. Actually, we need two of them because space is second derivative. So those two boundary conditions are the edges. Temperature being x at something uh, like 0 over here and 0 over here. So you need three boundary conditions. One in time, two in space. All right? Uh, but don't worry about it, OK? Like, like that's not really the point uh, of this discussion. The point of this discussion is that if you start with sine, if you start with sine n pi x over a, you will end up with sine n pi x over a times e to the minus n squared pi squared over a squared times d times t. OK? Yes. Very good question. So your question is still about the boundary conditions. Yes? Don't worry about it. <laughs> OK? Uh, OK, if you are worried, then let me say that we have a finite bar, and both edges are kept at 0. So one-dimensional transient. One-dimensional, what do you call it? One-dimensional transient conduction. conduction. Yes. No. Very good, very good. One dimensional finite transient conduction. Very good. Now, what if, what if I start with, so this is when I start with sine n pi x over a, I end up with sine n pi x over a times this. What if I start with any function f0? Can I find it using the above relationship? Yes, sort of. Uh, we introduced the simpler one. Uh, it's still for your transform, <laughs> I know. But uh, do you remember what we could do with any function when we have signs? Do you remember the last lecture? We could represent the function as some coefficients times n. Of course, it works. It works if we have this boundary condition. Okay, this is a good boundary condition. So, do you agree that we can actually represent any function with a sum of signs? Do you remember? Are you with me? Yes? So what is going to happen to the solution then? <coughs> OK, zero. <laughs> yes? One dimensional what? Ah, non dimensionalization. Okay. That's a very nice concept. Uh, you, you don't need it for this. Uh, but but yes, if you do it, your equation you get rid of some of the uh, variables and you have you are basically independent of the system size and etc. Right? Okay. The question is about the exam. You you will, as I mentioned earlier, maybe you didn't hear. You will not do this in the exam. Definitely. You just need. Do you did you get that diffusion equation gets rid of the wiggles? 
that's it. That's the level of in information that you need. Okay? What does diffusion equation do? You? Yes. Okay. Gets rid of the wiggles. Gets rid of the wiggles. Don't memorize it, but yeah, like that's the. But, but you see, since every sign can, uh, can be written like this, the t, if you start with any function like this, then your t x of t will be just a summation of c n sine n pi x over a times e to the minus n squared pi squared over a squared dt. Do you see what just happened? You have a general solution to any kind of initial condition. How did you get it? You represented the initial, initial uh, function in terms of certain functions, signs, right? And at the end of the day, uh, you got a nice result. Well, Okay. By the way, how do you get C ends? Uh, yes, so you have this. How do you get C ends? Hmm? Do you remember like there was this sine n pi x over a fx, there were some coefficients, etc. You actually have to have square root 2 over 8 for it to work properly, etc. Okay. Let me bring it all together. Bring, bringing all together. So here is my point. My point is that you can think of this equation like this. Like a matrix, uh, like a vector, taking a derivative of a vector with respect to time equals to some matrix over here which corresponds to the operation times that vector. Okay? Is it, is, is it new to you? No? All right. So let me call this matrix A. Okay, I'm calling this matrix A. So I have del T over del T equals A T. What is the solution of this? The solution of this is vector t is equal to e to the power of a matrix times time of t0 vector. This is what I get. OK. How can you take matrix on top of an exponential? Do you have any ideas? Hmm? Taylor, expansion. Taylor expansion, yes, very good. So we already talked about this, right? E to the 2i was rotation with two radians, right? Now we are dealing with a matrix, E to the m. What they would do? Well, it turns out that if you do this, if you just take e to the x, 1 plus x, 1 over 2 factorial x squared, 1 over 3 factorial x cubed, and if you just simply blindly apply it to a matrix, uh, it's OK to do that. So you get identity matrix plus the matrix itself, plus 1 over 2 factorial times the matrix squared, 
plus 1 over 3 factorial times matrix cubed, etc. I was about to put three bars on top of this because it's cubed, etc. If you are doing it in MATLAB, if you are doing it in MATLAB, which we are going to do, you basically get exp m of m. Not just exp, but exp, exp m. Then it does this operation. Have you used it before? No? Anyone? Some of you have used it. Good. Okay, so what? Hmm. Yes. Uh, T is there any function, right? Any, like, any top of the uh, T is uh, any, like, in this case, it corresponds to temperature. So how can it be a vector? I mean... Yeah, good. Okay. You didn't miss the previous lecture, right? No. no yes. So, in the previous lecture, we talked about thinking about functions as vectors. But you, you have to think about infinite vector. Do you remember that? Yes. But if, if that's bothering you, thinking about infinity, then you can think about a finite values of that function at a certain finite number of grids. So you basically computerize it to think about it. All right? All right, good. Uh, now we have this very long derivation that will take us to the end. Should we do it? I think it's a lot of fun. Um, do you want me to do it or not? Yes? Just 10 minutes of your life wasted. Uh, otherwise, it should be fine. So, I want, uh, we need to do this so that you see where the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, what is the relationship of that to this? Okay, we need to do it. Really quickly, remember the matrix A would bring us eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Do you remember them? Yes? So what was the, their property? Their property was that if I do this, I get a lambda n, vn, right? <coughs> do you remember? Uh, by the way, is our matrix this minus 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 2, is it Hermitian? It is Hermitian, right? So it has real eigenvalues and uh, eigenfunctions that can form a complete orthonormal basis. So we are going to use this. Orthonormal basis means that Vn dagger Vn will give us 1, right? What else? Uh, just give me a moment, sorry. Give me a moment, give me a moment. Okay, I didn't show you this, but let me just write it down here. This is identity matrix. Okay. Uh, I can show you why, but let me not show it to you. Okay. So if you take it for granted, then I can continue with this following uh, thing. But buckle up your seat belts. This will take a while, only 10 minutes. So 
we are dealing with this, right? Identity plus A of T plus A squared T squared over 2 factorial, etc. Do you agree? Yes? So I'm going to insert this identity. This identity is already here. But I'm going to insert it also over here, also over here, etc. Okay? So what do I get? T is equal to n1 to infinity vn vn dagger plus a matrix times this identity n equals to 1 to infinity vn vn dagger t plus a squared and then again that identity vn vn dagger t squared t squared right hmm what over 2 factorial yes very good and it continues like this multiplied by this t all right what do i want to get from this I want to get from this the following. Do you see that A times Vn is going to give you just lambda N times Vn? Do you agree? Yes? A squared times Vn is going to give you lambda N squared times Vn. Do you have any problem with that? Anyone? No? So what do I get? I basically get... Yes? Yes, okay. So A N squared, uh, sorry, A N, A squared V N equals to what? Where are you? Yes. A multiplied by A V N, right? And this is lambda times A V N. Lambda N, lambda N squared V N. Okay, very good. So, I can write T as 1 <coughs> plus lambda N plus 1, 2 factorial lambda N squared, dot, dot, dot. And then I have this VN, VN dagger, N equals to 1 to infinity. T0. Okay. Uh, I have to put it here. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. There we go. Are you happy? No? Why not? Exactly. Uh, that's basically what we are doing. Maybe I'm missing some of these parts, but uh, we are almost there. What is this? Uh, we forgot t's. So e to the lambda n t. Right? Very good. So we have <coughs> t equals to, so I'm going to write this one as a coefficient. Dagger times t0 is a coefficient times e to the lambda n times t times Vn. So, what does it tell you? It tells you that you can solve any problem given, given your matrix A 
if you have its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you can simply find its coefficients from this. These are CNs, right? And you can write it down like this. CN e to the lambda n t times uh, Vn vector n equals to 1 to infinity. That's what it is. Where Vn and lambda n are eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A. Okay? All this will be helpful once we switch to quantum mechanics. Okay? Do you have any questions, comments, ideas? Um, let me just, for the sake of a bit of fun, let me show you this. No, it's just a matrix A. So let's say I have 1,000 grids, OK? So this is how the matrix A looks like. Do you see? Minus 2, 1, 1, minus 2, 1, 1, minus 2, 1, etc. And do you remember that in diffusion equation, we saw that signs are special functions that don't get affected. They just fall down like this. They are basically eigenvectors of the diffusion operator. So if the, diffu if the second derivative is a matrix, then its eigenvectors must be signs. Did you follow? Yes? Look, I'm going to get eigenvectors and eigenvalues here. And let me just plot the first eigenvector. You see, it's a sign. Everybody can see it? Let me show you the second one so that you are convinced that it's a sign. This is more sign-like, right? Third one is sine 3 pi x over a. Are you happy? You are not happy? Are you happy? Sure. 30? It's a sign. Yes, yes, yes. If you have, it's the number of humps that you are going to get. Okay, so what we have learned, this matrix corresponds to the second derivative and its eigen functions are signs and they are special functions. How about eigenvalues? They look weird. Do you know what this number is? Maybe you are familiar with it. Is it pi squared? It is pi squared. So if I, let me just divide everything by pi squared. Eval <coughs> equals eval divided by pi squared. Let's see what it gives us. It's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Okay? 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. Just like we have found with, you, you remember the sec when you take the second derivative, it was like pi squared over a squared. Then there was 4 pi squared over a squared, 9 pi squared over a squared. I hope there are some connections forming in your brain, some new connections uh, that doesn't involve hate, but instead involves love and joy and happiness. Okay, let's have a break.